Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO the last days of Europe in which I'm your host Mr. Mocha Lover in which right now I asked you guys yesterday or at least in the last video how are we going to find our legacy? Uh, are we going to deal with uh, Kishi directly and Sheena? Uh, you are correct we will remove their influence in the Ministry of Commerce first or going after them is too risky we need to coexist for now. Um, so overall a lot of you guys want me to go with Fukuda. There's a lot of support for Fukuda at the time of this recording and other comments included play as the USA, play as MP. NPA Yunnan, of course, and Toolbox here, which we will eventually. Um, someone says we should target the... Uh, targeting the Ministry of Commerce might end in Order 44. Uh, it might, but you might get Order 44 if we go directly with just doing directly. And I'll be honest, I did play a slightly, not very much. We're going to go deal with them directly. So we'll see what happens. But if is secured as a scent, we're not going to Sheena, so... Um, I think I read this one last time, but the once relatively obscure Takeo Fukuda has enjoyed a meteoric rise in recent times, thanks in large part to the patronage of Kai, however. It would be wisest to exploit this victory to the fullest, to ensure its permanence. All that is needed to secure his continued rise to the heights of power is to receive assurances of support from Takagi and the independent faction. But the beginning of... the end. Kai has sat in his office alone. It was quiet, only the soft flow of air conditioning washed over him, its chill all the more prominent because of the sweat that drenched his body. He dabbed his face with the cloth. He wanted to just stay in his office, and for long minutes, stared sightlessly at the door to his office, a barrier between him and consequence, for now. He could pretend that everything was normal, that it was fine. He couldn't stay here forever, though. He took a deep breath. He miscalculated. He should have listened to Fukuda, and exercised caution when dealing with the hardliners. But no, he thought that decapitating the head of the snake was possible. Such a direct and drastic move against Kishin Shina had immediately caused a reaction. He expected that the hardliners would be too disorganized or capable of doing anything, but he had been wrong. Very, very wrong. The bureaucracy had revolted, or enough of them that threatened to paralyze the government. The technocrats had instantly split, and too many were in line against him. Kishi and Shin's influence was still too great, and now stronger than ever. All that Kai had achieved with this attempt had been to ensure that he had no successor. There could be no going back now. Uh, he didn't expect his government to last much longer, now that he knew what his legacy would be. That of another prime minister who would re retire in disgrace reduced be reduced to a single sad footnote in history, a legacy of failure. Which is not true, because actually, if we went the other route, which I tried initially when I played this off screen, we would have lost uh, at least, we would have gone down to where? Because right now we have 252 MPs. If we did the middle route, which is what I originally wanted to do, we would have ended up with like 100, literally 170 MPs, which means we're done. The campaign's over. We couldn't really get too many more people to support us. So going, actually, this route in the end was better. So it's not a legacy of failure. Sure, government stability decreases by... Uh, you know, a slight 80%. But it's okay since we're at 100% already. How support spirit uh, decreases by 10%? No issue. Technocrat faction power decreases by 10%? Sort of an issue, but not too bad. But hardliner relations would decrease by 75% currently. And actually, if we did the other route, we would have increased the hardliner relations by 30 but also, or decreased it maybe, I can't remember, but increased their influence by like 30 or 40 So really, this is probably the best route for us, especially since, as I knew, we built up a lot of political power, and I knew we'd need a political power in the future, so... Um, our government's gonna collapse. 20%? Not good, obviously. Actually, do we lose political power there, or stability? Maybe. Um, House peers, we're 231. Still bad. And actually, we're so low now, we can actually increase public approval, as well as House of Peers support, but I do want to increase our power first, so... Decrease power, decrease public opinion? No. Decrease House of Public Support first. That's fine with us. Now we're 242. It's very good. So, yeah, not great. We still have 231, which is not great, but increased relations here. Excellent. 244. Not bad. And we have calls to resign. A government is teetering on the edge of collapse. With calls for a resignation of the Prime Minister growing, we have only a short amount of time to stabilize the situation before it goes beyond control. 30 days. We need 30% government stability, so deliver a speech to the diet. Not bad. Make media appearances. Reassure the peers. Court the Navy. And court the Army. Or appeal to the Army. So, we'll do one, two, three. Just do them all. There you go. And so, 126 political power remaining, while 33% government stability. Not bad. And we still have a majority in, in the diet, so... Overall, not bad. Oh, 6% economy growth. Nice. Uh, 11 billion in deficit, when it's green now. Not bad, either. So, overall, it could be looking a lot worse. That's why I, I... You never know if you need extra political power. Actually, China looks really nice with Yunnan under their control, actually. Uh, they're back in the sphere, which is nice. And did China take all the Chinese spheres? Yes, they did. That's not good for us. But oh well. And we still have political favors, which I don't really care about too much. Uh, here, not too much. Of course, we have global conflict still and the Pan-African Liberation Front, which I actually did do some funky stuff off the screen to make sure... That, well, during the last episode. Not right now. Between this episode and the last episode, I didn't do anything funky with these guys. But now, they're doing okay. So, some military advisors. We could... 
costs extra political power. They shouldn't need it right now. Um, they're still doing well pushing into these guys, so... I think we're kind of done. The Americans request talks on the treaty ports. The official missive landed softly on the Prime Minister's desk, completely out of proportion with the weight of its contents. The office was silent uh, for a few short moments as Prime Minister Kaya Okunori and the Foreign Minister considered the magnitude of what was occurring. It's finally come, hasn't it? Prime Minister Kaya Okunori ventured. The Americans have finally worked up the nerve to ask for the treaty ports. Ever since Eisenhower tore up that Akagi Accords, we had to know that this would come someday, the Foreign Minister sighed. The Americans probably aren't serious considering going to war for the ports, but... Prime Minister, Kaya Okunori, not as somberly. Two years after the victory in the Pacific, the ports were rapidly becoming more trouble than they were worth as Japan faced new challenges from every corner. If Japan could walk away from the negotiations with its tangible guarantees, open trade, oil provisions, or an enforceable promise to formally recognize Japan's suzerainty over the sphere, then what were two ports really? It would take every ounce of political and diplomatic capital to keep any deal as favorable to Japan as possible. Uh, <clears throat> even if they gave up on way, give way on certain items to gain a temporary advantage to be used later. And if they failed, the Prime Minister's days would surely be numbered. Meaning Hawaii? Uh, not bad. We're going to spend a lot of political power here, too. On Japanese carrier. A neutral country like Mexico would be perfect. Let's see what the Americans want. Gain political power, thus losing some of our investment political power. Made in Hawaii? We will lose political power, get, invest more. We want to invest as much as possible. Invest, invest, invest. Currently in the lead, and what is America going to say in return? Come on, Cameroon. Can you just win? Take San Pedro. Come on. Come on, America. Come on. 50 PP, not bad. Um, they have a kind of offer. Are they being serious? Prime Minister Kaya Okunari asked his foreign minister. The Americans are asking us for a favor, and yet they want us to quibble over holding the summer on their ships? The foreign minister replied he hesitantly. The Americans are being stubborn, but they might have their own concerns about how the negotiations play back home. If they did them a favor here, they might be willing to listen to us later. Prime Minister Kaya Okunori sighed. We have to no privacy on one of their ships, but a favor is a favor. He fell silent for a moment. What about Mexico? It's neutral ground, we all, and we all have diplomatic missions there. It's the only option that is re reasonable for everybody. If you need a carrier... Well, let's see. Play nice or else? Well, that's it for today's business. You're all free to go except for Shina and Fukuda. You both stay. Kaya closes his portfolio with a dry collapse, a frown curling his lips floorward. The rest of the misters filed out of the cabinet room quietly, leaving Shina and Fukuda exchanging awkward glances at the table. Kai paid them no heed, allowing them to sit in silence for several more seconds while he lit a cigarette, impressing his authority with a prolonged exultation of smoke. Both of you have been quite busy aside from your political official duties, I hear. There's enough ba backbiting and gossiping that I've even heard of it. Fukuda and Shina didn't respond, knowing well that making weak excuses would only worsen their, worsen their position. Kai regarded them both coolly before nodding once and crushing a cigarette into a half-filled ashtray. I've never hidden my intent to hand things over to a successor, but Kyle lowered his voice, steep steepling his hands. I intend to announce my successor at a time of my choosing. No matter who succeeds me, we must remain united. Meaningless maneuvering only weakens us. Sheena and Fukuda both nodded wordlessly. Kaya pushed his chair back, raising a hand towards the door. After you, gentlemen. After you. The summit is set. The Americans have sent over their agreement on the summit occasions, the foreign minister said. Watching his prime minister, Kaya Okunori, read over the community key. It's about time, the PM stated. None of us have the time to be playing some games over time and place. The foreign minister nodded hesitantly. Can't quite believe we're still going to be doing this, giving up what we won in the war just like this. Prime Minister grimaced before, or Prime Minister Kai grimaced, before composing himself. It's not just you, believe me, but we've all wa ever wanted from America are two things, oil markets. If given the ports back guarantees the, us those things, then this will all have been worth it. Always keep your eyes on the prize. No focus we can do yet, which is interesting, but... Alright, whatever. Whatever. We'll get more public and probably government support if we uh, do well with this. And they make their offer. The U.S. has given us the exact offer we were looking for in this deal. The President promises to give a significant amount of oil in exchange. We will return the ports of San Fran and L.A. to the Americans. If we take this offer now, the oil will give the economy a boost if need it needs, and our military shall be ever stronger. However, the amount of oil the Americans promise us seems too good to be true. The American diplomats have been quite the shady bunch surrounding the whole deal. We could try to request more oil to make sure they're telling the truth, but this plan could backfire quickly. Prime Minister, we have two options to take that could alter the course of the deal. We must hurry before the Americans propose a counteroffer. Wait. The American gets the event. The Japanese want more. They demand even more oil? Wait, what? Uh, this is kind of backwards. Demand even more oil says we get complete success. Accept the offer as is. So we'll do that one. What can we get from the Americans? Pesky Americanos. We're currently in the lead. They invested negative 50. Dealing, dealing with AI is a little fickle sometimes, man. An offer. The Prime Minister of the U.S. is offering to give us a moderate amount of oil in exchange for the treaty ports. It is as much as we hope to get out of them, but at least it was, is, is it drastically less. Nevertheless, this amount of oil will help our economic situation greatly. 
American diplomats are holding very firmly to this deal, and they are eager to move on. We can still try and push for more oil to give them, but the Americans may not back down with this offer. Alternatively, we could attempt uh, accept the deal as it stands and continue the negotiations. Are we willing to take a risk, Prime Minister? I want more. Give us more. Especially if we're going to give them the ports back. So, oh, I think you guys are not done yet. We're sitting at Wolofia, right? Yeah, Jola, Wolofia, so, could be success. The trade deal between the U.S. and the Empire of Japan is being finalized after days of proposals and communication. It seems like both parties are getting the resources they really need. The U.S. will have its ports in San Francisco and Los Angeles to return without conflict, and the Empire of Japan will be given an oil grant that will help them solve the widespread shortages throughout the sphere. The President and Prime Minister of the U.S. and Japan respectively shook hands on the deal just moments ago. No matter what, both parties hope that these negotiations will better relations between the two global superpowers. Workers in California and Japanese home islands rejoice as the nation announced the completion of the deal. Though the trade was completed, the diplomats of the U.S. and Japan still have work to do. Talks are supposed to carry on in the next few days, but one thing's for certain. There will be a peaceful end to these important negotiations. It worked! Approaching the table, one of the biggest obstacles faced by our traders and industries is their lack of access to markets in the North and South America. It's caused by our embargo by the USA, and the prospect of lifting this embargo is the biggest economic prize up for negotiation. Our negotiators are asking to lay out their position to start the talks. Firstly, we could ask simply for the embargo to be lifted. This would ensure us the most important prize, access to market, or market access, and allow us to quickly move on to other parts of that treaty. Many in our cabinet, however, believe that a mutual lift favors the Americans too much and are pushing to attach trade conditions to the deal. These conditions would provide for mutual reduction of several tariffs in areas beneficial to Japan, ensuring us more favorable trade terms but not, might not go down with, well with Americans. Thirdly, there are some who think we are offering a deal too cheaply, inviting further bullying attempts by the Americans in the future. This outspoken group demands. We touch a hefty price tag to the transfer of the treaty ports, and this makes the conclusion or condition to resume trading. Most others fear tying these issues together could jeopardize finding an agreement on either one. Let's the embargo, a little trade agreement, they should pay for the ports. Or there'll be no trade. I don't know. They'll pay for the ports, or there'll be no trade. Uh, let's see what happens with that one. Japan's currently in the lead. They have to get, if, if they want to win or do better. Oh, oh! they might have taken it. They might have taken it. Come on, Cameroon. Come on. Smiles all around. It appears an end is in sight for the trade embargo between the world's greatest economies. Oops. The negotiators from the ongoing summit between the U.S. and Japan have made an announcement this morning. That a deal will, be, uh, will resume trade between the countries has been agreed in principle to be signed later on today. On both sides of the Pacific, great hopes are being placed on the economic benefits of the deal, and businesses are scrambling to take advantage of the new goods and offers and markets on the offer. It would seem the world is one step closer to thawing relations between the U.S. and Japan. Let the goods flow across the Pacific. 7%! Barely, but 7%. Less than 105% debt GDP ratio. We're doing quite well. It would suck if there would be an oil crisis someday somewhere, but hopefully we don't have one eventually. As we're just building up so many refineries, even though we keep building up more prisons in Kant. Koshu. Prisons? Yes, please. We love prisons here. Put those Chinese prisoners in there and the American proposal. The American delegations open up talks in the third and last clause by expanding the scope of the negotiations. In addition to the original subject, the transfer of the treaty ports back to U.S. control, they're also calling for a demilitarization of Hawaii. They justify this brazen demand by stating that the purpose of this clause is to secure peace in future relations and that this objective demands a neutral East Asia or East Pacific, as Hawaiian missile crisis has shown. We are well within our bounds and refuse this offer. We never agree to discuss the status of Hawaii and are under no obligation to. Some of our delegation are calling for us to punish Americans for their rash behavior by attaching conditions, including demilitarization to reports instead. Others see the demand as bluff. The Americans are trying to shore up uh, their position for negotiation and suggest. We offer up a bargain. We demilitarize uh, uh, Hawaii, as they ask, and if they would agree to, uh, to limit the return ports to civilian purposes as well. I'd be advised to caution you against seeing the proposal as a negotiation tactic. This is a clause that is most important to the Americans, and they might very well be willing to stake the entire accords on getting a favorable outcome here. What should we do? We offer them a bargain. Accept their demands. Punish their insolence. Ooh. We can punish their insolence. We could do that. America's currently in the lead. Well, go big or go home, right? Work your own lead. Oh, come on. Please take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Come on. Come on. What are they going to do with it? What are they going to do? Come on. Oh, uh oh. America's going to lead. Uh oh. 175. That's okay. The American response. The American delegation has finished milling over a reasonable objection to their demands for Hawaiian demilitarization. They're not pleased after expressing their outrage of what they consider callous and arrogance on their part. They have resubmitted the original proposal, restating the need for a neutral East Pacific. A rebalancing the strategic threat, they say, is a prerequisite for a productive future relationship between our nations, and they seem willing to stake the outcome of this whole summit on getting it. 
Our delegation is united to condemn the arrogance of this demand. We're ready and willing to transfer the treaty ports and it's outrageous of them to demand more, they say. A wise also a significant strategic asset, and demilitarization would lose both our navy and air force as an important base. On the other hand, we're just losing the economic benefits that we worked so hard to secure ourselves in the first two clauses. However, we proceed the lines are now firmly drawn, there'll be no further negotiation in the clause. How will we do it? Can't accept. No agreement in sight. Uh, wasn't there a way to get Panama, though? I think there's a way to get Panama. If we do that one, then what? America's still in the lead. Which is okay. I, mm, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Oh, we give Central Africa. Well, we'll see what happens. Agreement reached. After several long days and nights spent negotiations, our delegations to the inform us that they've reached a comprehensive agreement with their Japanese counterparts. As a toast, or as a, with their Japanese counterparts, as a toast of success, our brightest policy experts are poring over the proposed clause, perfecting wording and ensuring consistency between the English and Japanese traditions or translations. Soon it will be time to sign, and long after, we hope we'll finally have our territory back. Our success on this clause bodes well for the outcome of the whole summit. One step closer to a comprehensive treaty. I don't know. Wasn't there a way to transfer, like, they get Hawaii, but we get Panama. Wasn't that a thing? I guess we don't, they don't know Panama anymore, but still. Yeah. Oh, Panama. Yeah, I don't know. I might go back and redo that just because I want to see if we can get anything better. The treaty port's return. The announcement of the comprehensive treaty between the U.S. of A. and Japan has been greeted with optimism in most of the country. Though, through the last week, the speeches were held and papers signed. The promise of a more peaceful vic... Oh. Hello. A uh, peaceful future seems at least a reality and a proud sigh of relief has passed through our nation. A tension that has been felt by our people over 20 years has finally been loosening its grip. Today, as the treaty ports of L.A. and San Francisco passed back to American hands, the atmosphere shifted to one of celebration all across the country. Everyday life has been given away to port parties, pulling old neighborhoods out into the streets in celebration. The biggest crowds have all been seen in the treaties ports and cities themselves in San Fran. Just from the gathered th throngs drowned out voices of the Japanese ambassador and his translator as the last Japanese flag was taken down and the stars and stripes hoisted in its place. Uh, surprise was evident among the Japanese as well as the sailors aboard uh, Chikuma found themselves cheered goodbye by the jubilant crowds and scowls and jeers they had come to expect from the Americans replaced by cheerful smiles and waves. Pictures of the uniformed Japanese uh, smiling and waving back to the crowds are now making the rounds on TV on both sides of the Pacific. Uh, truly, it feels like a page of internal U.S. relations. U.S.-Japanese relations. Wait, why did we get... Wait. Significant oil constituents. That should not happen to us, right? Uh... Uh... Fuel game for oil? Um, that should not be ours. That doesn't make any sense. For the past 20 years or so, the passage of Japanese vessels from the treaty ports out to the sea has taken an almost ritualistic regularity. Upon finishing inventory and the final inspection, sailors have been ordered to stay in their bunks during transit. For the first short leg of this journey back to friendly waters, each and every Japanese ship has been sneered by farewell by jeers, threats, and obscene gestures from a hostile city. Today, as the last Japanese cruiser finally left the port of San Fran, the virtual was broken. The jubilant crowds freshly arrived from port parties all over the city. Uh, waved and cheered our sailors a final goodbye. The captain of Chukima called for all hands on deck to witness the event, and soon our sailors were cheering and waving back. Pictures of the exchange were making the rounds on TV on both sides of the Pacific. A sure sign to people that an era of heightened hostility is coming to a close. Not everyone's equally enthused, of course. Many in their own country are grumbling about how much ground we're giving to the Americans. We'll look at the hope that the economic benefits of the courts will change their minds as they start trickling out um, to the population. To the sailors of Chikuma and the many watching at home, it feels like the start of something new. The end of an era. Um... I don't know, I might want to really do that one. Is there anything else we can do here? Excellent. That's nice keeping contact. Kane has seemingly recovered far better than Oshan. Both men had thinned out during their time in West Africa, but on return to Japan, Kane seemed to eat enough to regain his previous body shape. Watching the man dig into to his crab legs make Oshan a little more jealous than he'd care to admit. His stomach had not quite recovered just yet, and he had opted for a garden salad. We were a strange little group. In my mind, West Africa was like enrolling into a university or some high school. Kane grinned to himself, clicking his teeth together. Could you see me in my any university, though? O'Shawn thought to himself and decided no. Who are you still talking to? Kane asked gruffly between loud bites. That's not a bunch of letters. Most of the guys we work with, uh, <clears throat> a bunch. O'Shawn tempor temporarily lost himself. Staring out of one of the restaurant windows, glimpsing a collection of the five lights out alongside the coastline, they were so darn bright. Anyways... Tayo never ended up responding. San's working some job in Hokkaido, and I've been calling up with Riku, but we recently lost contact. But don't put too much thought into it. I'm sure you'll see them again sooner or later. O'Shawn found himself staring back into the flickering lights. At least three of them have been gutted out. That's, they're a pain, aren't they? What have you been getting up to then, O'Shawn? Industrial fishing stock taking. I'm running a little fishing store myself. O'Shawn answered, huh? Uh, I'm working my bureaucracy job again. Kane mopped up the remnants of his crab, shifting the pieces to the right side of his plate now. It was going to sound stupid, but it was a little nice little war, wasn't it? I don't know. I enjoyed myself a little too much there or something. I said it before. It was like enrolling into school. At least our bit of it. It was, wasn't it? So why don't we get Fukuda here? One more, prop one more proposition. 
Our success in the poor transfer negotiations, with the ease of which we reached an agreement, led to a markedly friendlier tone of the cement. Our delegations remarked on the surprising willingness on the side of Japan to discuss territorial revision and find a compromise in the East Pacific together. This provides us with an opportunity to get a pass up. With most of the treaties safely agreed upon, it's time to open discussion on one last question of the return of Hawaii. This is the American we're getting, isn't it? In order to get them to even consider the transfer, we must be prepared to give important concessions in return. Our advisors believe they might ask for a joint or neutral administration of the Panama Canal. Extensive arm limitation concessions are both, regardless. It would not be a price we should be willing to pay. Securing Hawaii would be a fantastic achievement for government and for the USA, but beyond that, it would cement this treaty as the end of the era of hostility between us and the Japanese. The last core U.S. territory is to occupy by Japan. Japan. Its return will mark a true end of the war in the minds of the public and usher in a time of peace in the East Pacific. Submit the proposal. Are we I guess we're done here, huh? Yeah, I think I'm probably going to redo this, maybe. We'll see. Maybe we're forced to go down that route, so... I don't know. I'm going to retry it off-screen, but let's see what happens first. It's always good to see what's going to happen first. Ah, uh, less than 7%. That sucks. 104.6. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. 2.2%. That's actually really nice. That's actually really good inflation for us. Keep finishing all that naval stuff. Minus 0.1. Not bad, too. So fuel gain per oil. Fuel capacity. Hmm. Regarding DMZ enforcement. Uh, for two avoid battle of superpower rivals, the initial negotiations went surprisingly smoothly. Both parties agreed to the lasting peace necessitated the complete absence of military installations and units, troops, planes, ships, missiles, and above, about the Hawaiian Islands and the Panama Canal Zone. Both parties resolved to forbid all military assets from fortifying, basing, or in some of the case of planes, overflying the aforementioned territories. Both parties also considered regular inspection by a bipartisan committee, ensuring the agreement's letter and spirit enforced. Where an otherwise ideal negotiation process meant the realities of jockeying with a geopolitical adversary was when the frequency of such inspections was broached. Our diplomats understandably proposed that the committee convene on an annual basis. The Americans insisted that they convene once every two years instead, stating that sufficiently rigorous inspection for two distinct locations require more time to conduct and report than a year's allotment. The Japanese delegations had responded by questioning the need for inspections lasting longer than a year. Their Western adversaries' insistence was unperturbed by the dismissal. After several hours of debate and several empty bottles of hard liquor, the conference's attendance finally reached a consensus here forth. A committee consisting of select officials and experts from both countries shall inspect Hawaii and the Panama Canal Zone for breaches of terms. Annually? Biannually. Biannually. And we can only get how much? 1.84 is still very good. And we're still looking very good here, too. Like, really good. Like, we're ready for another civil war. I wonder if there's going to be, like, a Zan Hin versus the Republic of India. That'd be kind of cool if we could see that sometime. Yeah, they're not in the OFN. Ionite pack look, do be looking kind of thick, though. Oh, and the French state joined them, too, huh? Iberian Federation, huh? Wait. Iberian Federation, is that good? They're controlled democracy, huh? I remember seeing that one. Iberian Union, it's usually, but Federation, huh? Alright. Well, we'll see what happens. Oh, Scotland is taking out Northern England. Um, what happened to the whole negotiation things here? Did I say no? I guess no. Alright, well, whatever. Uh, Scotland, how are you doing so well? Who are you? Robert McIntyre. Which I said his name wrong before, and Dunehammer Game was really disappointed in me. But, you know, whatever. It happens. I don't know my Scottish. Eh, let's do that anyways, because he can. Uh, Harold Wilson, why are you sucking so hard? You got plenty of manpower. Double their divisions, and yet you got, literally got encircled here. And when is the next focus supposed to fire? Um, independence and oh, unrest in the Hawaiian Islands. You want to do that again? Please go right ahead. The Republic of Turkey is back, led by Turkan Akol Akiol. All right, six point four percent. 10.37, 104.4, 246, 33% government stability. Not a lot of stability, not gonna lie. It's not a lot, but it still works. Um, I hope this is not bugged. I hope we can keep continue doing the whole treaty port thing, but it seems like this is a little bugged, especially with the whole Fukuda thing. So, as much as I love. You know, working with the economy and such. Is there anything else we can do with this? Yes, no, maybe so. I'm going to have to go back off screen and see what happens anyway. So, let's go and get that one done. I'll see what happens. Well, everyone, it seems like progressing the focus tree has now broken, which is great.
really great in August 7th, 1969. Hopefully still get some oil crushing stuff, but as you can see when I open up all the cons commands here, I've experimented with a lot of different uh, events. So this is the one that gets us Fukuda, but his legacy secure today. Was a day that would bring or long be remembered. Few would know of it, but it would always remain. Well, always remember it. He would. A day where he'd always celebrate, even if there was only one who could share in that celebration. A masterwork, my friend, Fukuda said with a smile as he raised his glass of champagne. No others could have dealt with Kishi in such a way. No, Kai thought to himself, there likely would not have been any others. He would have preferred a more extensive celebration for today. One larger than just sharing a drink with his heir apparent, but that would come in a more formal time. A time when Fukuda ascended to properly take his place. So certain now, and so far now, he was content. With Kishi dealt with, Shina had crumbled nearly the moment he had been confronted, with no one left to back him. He pre privately conceded to his allies that he was abandoning his push to lead the technocrats. Kai didn't know what the excuse had been given, and it wasn't important. What was important that he had won. Kishi Shina, they had all been neutralized. There was no one else to stand in the way of Fukuda taking his place and continuing the work that had been started. I expect that Kishi's coming absence from politics will be taken poorly by some of the peers, Kai amused as he slipped his wine, but they are few and unimportant. And there's little we can do to outside the outside the technocrats, Fukuda agreed. This was the last gasp of an old era, one which has finally been struck its death blow. That it has, Kai nodded. The future is bright, my friend, and I will retire well, knowing my work will be continued. You will do well, my friend. The man who would soon take his place bowed his head and thanks. Your trust is well placed, Okinori. I will complete the work you started. So... I'm not sure what else we're supposed to do here. I mean, I use cons commands for this, as you saw, but... Get more government stability, political power. There's other events in, um... Uh... The, the events folder, which I found a lot. There's like 16 different purge events or something like that, but... It is what it is, so... I just It's disappointing that this is still glitched. And I didn't fix the whole... Treaty port negotiation stuff, why return Panama Canal Zone thing, because it's all glitched too. Crucial to the governing of any prime minister is the support of the aristocrats, controlling both the House of Peers as well as significant posts throughout the government. In the past, many of them, including one of their own most prominent figures, Naruhiko, Naruhiko uh, Higashikuni, have been hesitant about a government, but after much negotiation, we are finally starting to sway the bulk of the aristocrats to support us. We only need to give them personal assurances of our goodwill, and then their allegiance will firmly lay with the current government. Not bad. And let's see, we're done with that like we did earlier. Uh, naval stuff because we can, my friends. Because we can. Let's see. Yes, there we go. And the economy is still, eh, it's still t ticking along. Could be better. Could be worse. Too bad it is just a little bit, uh, well, still glitch. Just disappointing, man. Quite disappointing. Of course, like we saw earlier, unrest on the Hawaiian Islands. The empire dissolved once again. Africa's killing itself. This is not demilitarized. We no longer, oh, these ports, oh, well, these are, those ports are demilitarized, but Hawaii is not. All right, whatever. And this is a mess. Oh, it's the African Union, huh? All right, so we didn't get anything out of this. So what's the point? I'm meeting Tokyo. Ambassador Heinrich Meckel got off his plane in Tokyo, taking notes. Other sides. Uh, oh crap. The game draws to close. Oh crap. Uh, come on. Uh, on the way in, despite Germany's world capital. Uh, status. Tokyo was as an equally, if not more, a popular city. It was quite as impressive in many regards. He took a few notes, disappears back home, were quick sticklers for the details, and set off for the meeting place with Japanese ambassadors. Meko san, said Ambassador Kanako. It's an honor to meet you. They shook hands. Meko was pretty sure that, legally speaking, the Japanese were degenerates now. But it would have been too rude to refuse his hand. Likewise, Meko said, quickly cutting off Kanako's rapid speech. <clears throat> on behalf of the J Empire of Japan, I would like to apologize for the assassination attempt on your previous daddy, and the great harm it caused not just to him, but your nation. We recognize words may never be enough, however, we are open to diplomacy as ever. Thank you, Ambassador Kaneko, Mackel said. He was surprised by how easily Ambassador apologized, but he wasn't one to look a gift to the horse in the mouth. It is excellent to hear such words, on the behalf of the Fuhrer and the German nation. It would be my honor to serve as a representative in opening up diplomatic relations between our countries. Kaneko was taken aback, to be honest. A declaration of war seemed more likely than an attempted normalization of relations, given Bowman's recent remarks about Kaneko had precisely the same opinion on gift horses as Merkel. Excellent. Let us begin the process. Our channels will need to be formalized, of course. What are the Germans doing? Uh, whispers and watchers, though. As it was, it began with rumors. Rumors that they were their own form of currency in the YSK, and there was no shortage of those who sought to use, exploit, and appropriate them for their own uses. Rumors were just as much to mislead as much as they were to inform. The savvy could learn from rumors and deduce truth from misinformation, and the gullible were useful for the former, however. Of late, the rumors had all consolidated around a specific narrative in the technocratic faction. There were those who had noticed that Shina and Kita's reforms 
Bureaucracy had gradually had their presence reduced. It was a subtle thing, and only this detentive noticed a gradual shutting of both men. No longer were many present at meetings in Shina, and subsequently Kishi appeared to have lost sway with much of the faction, and if Shina had fallen out of favor too many, that could only mean one thing. Fukuda Takeo had been the man Kai had selected to be a successor. When that narrative had taken hold, more rumors swirled around. People who spoke about how Fukuda and Aoki had been seen often visiting the office of the Prime Minister and taking more and more responsibility than the nation or the faction, learning that this had triggered a number of reactions, covert and subtle, throughout the YSK. Many of the technocrats themselves, cut out of the high-level pol politicking taking place, were simply watching and waiting. All the other factions were not so restrained, scrambling and plotting preparation for the inevitable announcement. It remained to be seen if Fukuda would have the support to succeed Kaya, but the stage was set, and soon the future Japan would be decided. The game draws to a close as stability will evolve. A policy by the name of Renew Japan has long been a promise of our faction, consisting of a program of military and economic modernization and expansion, particularly in the areas of military administration and the agricultural sector. Fulfillment of this policy is key not only swaying public opinion, but possibly even gaining the upper hand against the Americans. More growth, even less uh, inflation. Oh, we have another thing to pass. That sucks. But oh well, we will deal with it head on. And since we're so close to 1970, at this point, I don't care. We're going to do stuff for the industry and stuff like that. Thank you. Come again. September 11th, cool, 5.8%, nice, nice, less than, about roughly 12 billion between uh, debt and GDP, not bad, not bad, and I kind of want to, oh, that'd be kind of nice, ooh, less deficit would be pretty good, but less growth is not good, though, there's no bueno, we do have 331 political power, though, we're still excellent, 265 is pretty good, though, that's actually really nice, I still haven't done anything down here, and I don't really plan on it, so we could do it, but... Maybe in the end. Maybe in the end we'll do it. We'll see what happens. I just want to make sure we can pass everything we really want, because it's not super important to do. Oh, and Vyatka is winning. Which, I mean, like I said before, they're very strong. Poor Omsk. Even Omsk is losing to Vyatka. Who is the democracy here? Pan-African community? Liberal democracy in Omsk. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, they have no map Grand Prince of Palti, Central Siberia versus these guys. Oh, oh, Yagoda. Mr. Mustache, man. Mr. Mustache. And peace coverts, and there goes those guys. Sovereignty of Western Russia. Probably the Russian Empire over here. Yep, Vyaka has won. Good job, Christian Democracy, Vladimir the Third. West African Union, Mali, Niger. Look at that. Aua Kaita. Happy October, everybody. Hope we're gonna have a great month. Niger. Led by Djibo. Pan Africanism. Oh, that's quite a lot of red there. Socialists. Benin. Ghana led by Kwame. Ivory Coast led by some Christoph. Guinea. Ahmed, before the aristocrats, Fukuda steeled himself. Everything hinged on this conversation. If he could not secure the support of the prince and the aristocrats, then all their work plans would be rendered pointless. Kaya was confident they would support him, but it was difficult to rely on that confidence, knowing that a wrong word could end in their support. Prince Higashi Kuni Narukito spoke for the aristocrats, and it was he who directly addressed them. Welcome, Fukuda Takeo. What do you request of us? I've come to request your support in my efforts within the House of Peers, Your Majesty, Fukuda answered. All of them knew the reason he was here, but formalities were important. <clears throat> Higashikuni's Higa Higa face was unreadable. And why would we support you? For the future of the Empire, Your Majesty, Fukuda answered. I am confident that the public will support will be in support of these measures. They are supportive of a less overbearing government, I can assure you. These plans do not interfere with the interests of yourself, the body, or the military. The prince inclined to said, and what are your, your own interests? The civilian prosperity of Japan, Fukuda answered, and as you are invested in the empire, so too am I, however. I understand that words are not enough, and I will ensure that the budget also reflects the interests of this esteemed body. You can see the prince and other aristocrats considering what he said, but many of them are remain impressive. It was difficult to remain silent, but only he could only wait. He could only hope. Anything we can do here? Propaganda campaign? More than enough support, more than enough public support now as well, so we might need it later on, but really not bad at all. 48% government civility is pretty nice. Support, 90% versus... Okay, they're both 90%. Was it, oh, seven billion here too. Beautiful. Stability above all, and retirement of the old grand, old grand old man, or the gom. There is a day that has long been in the making, and now is fast approaching, and it's time for Kaya Okinawa's retirement. A fact that will be greeted with sadness by some, relief by others, and respect for the man who, from all corners of politics. Even as both long-time allies and tenacious enemies bid him farewell as he leaves the public eye, however, there is also a creeping feeling of uncertainty. With him gone, what's next? Resignation, we must ensure that our affairs are in order. Unless we are in a very strong position, the succession will likely be challenged by other factions in the, in the diet. Hopefully, the focus sheet will change in the next one. If there is another one, there should be another one. I mean, Japan is a major power, so there should be another one. Thank you. Happy November, everybody. 6% growth. I'm shot up just a little bit more. 102.2%. Not bad. Not bad whatsoever. How is society doing as well? Minus 0.08, not bad. Anything here? 0.94. 
Still getting worse for research facilities. Not good. Agriculture is slowly going up. Function administration is still going up slightly. Expertise is getting worse. Not good. Industrial equipment, not bad. And then we have, of course, military professionals improving at 3.74 every month. Be presenting the manifesto. It was time to unveil the plan to the YSK, the renewal, Renew Japan Manifesto, that would form the basis of his future governance. Fukuda understood that it would be this presentation which would either ensure the support of the YSK, or solidify their opposition towards him. Japan has been plagued with stagnation, Fukuda began. The past years have made this clear. Simply trying to curb the symptoms is insufficient for what the Empire requires. Half measures are insufficient. Hesitance ensures our decay. We must be bold, and more importantly, willing to take major steps to do what must be done. What I propose is not a simple fix to fix that which plagues our nation, but a renewal. All of his eyes up to the crowd. A renewal is not just the government, but all society. For too long we've made the mistake of believing only the government can solve the problems of our nation, and this false assumption has cost us. Fukuda gripped the sides of this podium. We have our limits, and we must acknowledge them unless we wish to one day collapse under our own weight. We can only manage to command so much before corruption, graft, and stagnation creeps in. Our overbearingness has strangled our economy, and if we wish to thrive, this must change. There were some good nods from the gathered crowds, and Fukuda pe pressed on. Time to change the U.S. has shown that we must adapt or fall behind. We must focus our efforts on national defense and critical industries to achieve its attendance, and it should be done working with the economy, not controlling it. This did seem to have made the impact he wanted. Everyone's listening attentively to what he was going to say next, while he could not tell the sentiment was positive or negative. He had at least had their interest. Now he had to sell them on the details. Are we going to win here? Should pass, we receive the following benefits. Education, healthcare, will policy increase, 1% GDP growth, increase of GDP by 2%, which is $6 billion, 265 out of 233, 76% out of 50. Should we win, we get 10% more government stability. Should we lose, we'll lose 20%. Who needed a stable government? I don't. Huh. Keep going down. Keep going down. Beautiful. We're almost going to match here. Oh, so sad over here. How are the the new poles? Oh, it's got to be bad if you're living as a poles. Oh, we do a lot of resistance, but no factories or production units. A lot of manpower. Paladar has f literally five times the manpower, but okay. Okay, well, that's interesting. No divisions. And if you both have no divisions, how did you end up like this? Islamic State of Talas. Uh, if you want to about him, please go ahead. Coughlin? And there's this guy too. Okay, well, whatever. Ah. Uh, he's trying to help out the French. And that game. Alright, whatever. Do they have a focus here for the Republic of Angola? They do. Fooled me twice. Kaya Okinori didn't have much time to prepare for the arrival of the representatives of the Reich. They had requested and negotiated at a particular time tension. Between Germany and Tokyo, yet arrived bearing champagne in the ten appearance of glass glad tidings. They saluted, shaking hands with the Japanese PM, and discussed possible German business ventures across the core prosperity sphere. For the past 20 years, the sphere had remained closed off to foreign economic interests, particularly that of the U.S. and Americans. Or, or German Americans origin. Now, as if someone begin to predict the cranks to show, or the cracks to show, the presence of German private investment has become a warmer thought, particularly over matters of employment and resource development in Bengal and Southeast Asia. The representatives had brought with them graphs and documents each to present the potential economic gain of welcoming German business in the East. As the delegation arrived, I chatted on. Grinning with sm eye smiles and crow crow's feet, Kai Okinari's eyes were locked onto the blazing red armbands wrapped around the representative's sleeves. Oh, they have extremely high. He clenched his teeth. The black void, uh, dark black void, of a swastika revolted him as he thought about the ravi ravaging chaos of the German presence in Eastern Europe and Africa as millions had been dispersed, abused, and outright cleansed from the earth so that Big Daddy could, of course, have his way. Swallowing a dry throat, Kai Okinari looked back up at the man suspiciously. He could permit at least some presence of German business and practically invite the enemy behind Japanese defenses. Or throw them out and starve the sphere of another opportunity for economic recovery. It's fine. It's interesting, they got a ray of hope. It's not bad, not great. Significant so oil concessions, effective civil rights, and extremely high uh, oil and unity, so. Not bad for them, not bad. How are we looking here? 8% growth, nice. Ooh, we're getting closer, we're getting closer. Less than 102% billion. Nice. Oh, we also might... Maybe you'll see it. Maybe we want the collapse of Burgundy. Maybe we'll see it. Hopefully we'll see it. I want to see them collapse. Oh, look. These are actually went back on the fence. I've been doing okay now. Isn't there a time limit for England to do well here? England and Wales? I think there was. Oh, no. The final hour. The wall mounted. Oh, look at that. Hey. The wall-mounted clock in the Prime Minister's office ticked remorselessly onwards, even as the ochre light of dusk melted away into the radiance of a full moon. Kaya's desk, usually heaped high with papers and reports, was empty except for a single sheet with a single message, I hereby tender my resignation as Prime Minister. 
Throughout the day, the paper sat unattended, studiously ignored in favor of anything else, telling up loose ends, micromanaging his policy staff. A few phone calls where a note would have sufficed. Kaya marveled at his own productivity, even if nothing of substance had been done. But now, as Tokyo slumbered, Kaya was faced with the final act of his state, and he still resisted even as he held his hand carved ivory seal in his hand. Part of him wanted to get over with it, a, a, a growing part of him. In fact, his supporters were, and Alice had been shocked when he succeeded Eno, warning him about the stress of the job, something he'd understood all too well now. But to step away was, inevitably, to surrender control, even if he had moved heaven and earth to secure succession. Kai started pensively at the ivory seal, remembering each time it had been used to get the economy back uh, onto its feet, to win over the stubborn generals and admirals, to prosecute the corrupt, to set the foundations of the Empire's intellectual future and then its economic future, all per the state's design, as is per design. As per, he hoped, his successor's design. With a single deliberate motion, Kai pressed the steel of the document, the vermilion ink glowing warmly in the cold moonlight, his last act frozen in time. Do we get another event? Please tell me there's another event. Oh, do we have 251? It's not bad. Technocrats? Oh, sure, why not? We got enough power here. A final toast. The daily papers were a pleasure to read. Kai had a few of them delivered this morning, and as he skimmed the headlines, all of them were saying variations of the same thing. Fukuda Takeo had been selected by the Jushin to be the next PM of Japan, and in support of the majority of the YSK. Against the odds and expectations of some of his critics, there would be a smooth transition of power now that Kai could retire safely. The effects of the Yasuda crisis would continue for years onwards, but because of his own work, the worst has passed, and Japan was stable. His retirement would be in triumph, knowing that Japan was in good hands. A knock on his door interrupted in his reading, Fukuda most likely. Congratulations, my friend, Kai said as his successor entered. You did it. With your support, Fukuda answered with a smile. There remains much work to be done, but I'll work to ensure that the Empire... The Empire is prepared. Our best days are to come. That they were. Kai was certain, domestically and internationally, he was certain that Fukuda would likely succeed. I've done something I've been saying. Or I, I had something I've been saving. Kai says he walked to his desk and pulled out a little bottle of champagne, something safe for celebration, he continued, pouring two small glasses, and I'm glad to pass this burden to you. I humbly accept, Fukuda said, slightly inclining his head as he took the glass. I'll never forget what you did for me and the nation, and the people will not either. He lifted the glass slightly into the air to the Empire. Kaya smiled and lifted his own glass. A new sun was rising over Japan, and this time he believed it would rain forever. To the Empire. Takeo Fukuda becomes leader for the authoritarian Democrat Party. Oh, wait. Well, it's either him or Shina, so. Kido is. Hmm. Takagi, no leader for liberal democracy. Alright. Well, we're authoritarian Democrats now, led by some Takeo Fukuda. Please tell me there's a new focus tree. I hope there is. This can't be it. This can't be it, right? Right. Okay, more unrest. Whatever. I don't care about the unrest right now. Uh, That might be it for the campaign, maybe? I hope not. I really, really, really hope not. So let me go see if there's anything else for us here. A celebratory meeting. Uh, German-Japanese relations are running high in a way they've not done since my August a predecessor. Declared that the esteemed Japanese honorary Aryans, Martin Bowman said in a conversation with a Japanese Prime Minister over the phone. In a similar way, tensions between our two great empires are lower than they ever have been in since our joint triumph over the decadent, degenerate Western allies. Overall, our nations are beginning to refer to one another as partners, if not friends, once more. Perhaps Bowman suggested we should officialize the thaw in relations between our two great powers with a celebratory diplomatic perception or reception. The Japanese head of government enthusiastically agreed. <clears throat> As a resulting dinner, at which the traditional German and Japanese fair held equal pride of place, everyone was in high spirits, and Borman took great pleasure in accepting the respects of the various dignitaries, the Einheit's Pact and East Asia alike, who congratulated his hard work to restore the German-Japanese ties. The Japanese Prime Minister was too very pleased at what he saw. At last, the old friendship between Germans and Japanese then began to rekindle many of those with... The chief conferred finally recalled the old alliance between the two powers in the Second World War, all things considered. Both leaders concluded detente has been a success. Uh, haughty can pie for all German partners. Also, um, I actually did a tax hike earlier, so, whoopsie. And I'm still doing it just because I'm going to cut down the debt to GDP ratio. But yes, we get less growth, but at the same time, cutting this down to nothing would be really amazing. But there's so far not been anything. I just had the event pop up. Also, Burgundy collapsed. Burgundy literally collapsed into like four different... Before we did Civil War, Burgundy eventually won the Civil War, though, and then Germany came knocking with the French state, and, well, the Burgundy's gone. Would you look at that? Now we're just waiting to see if there's anything for the oil crisis. Well, there's not too much else here for us, but we can send some volunteers to Yemen, and we've already spent a lot of political power. I've actually was doing some of the political favors here. Um, so, as you can see, we're doing quite a few of these things here, just because we can, so. And the Kyoto reinvigoration sounds really nice as well. It costs a lot of political power, but whatever. Economic support, might as well. Involvement increased by five? Sure, why not? Anything that doesn't cost us anything too much, that's fine with us. Command power? Why not? Send advice to the Yemeni army? Mm, we could. Okay, why not? 
Guys, what else are we going to do with our political power here? Ah, uh, you meet a bunch of horses. Good times. Um, so yeah, the focus trees are pretty much done. It's a little disappointing. Um, I wish we could do something here, but whatever. Overall, we're moving in. Going to have a good old time here. But yeah, overall, I've enjoyed this campaign. It's a pretty fun campaign. I, I was really kind of excited to see what else would be here. But like, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. So uh, I'll look to the future for, you know, for when the TNO does get to the next stage of Japan for TNO, just because it's a lot of fun. It's a ton of fun, actually. Um, yeah, I wish it was more. I wish it wasn't so glitch, but I know the devs are working on it. Things will happen eventually. I'm not super worried about it too much, but yeah, I would like... I like more. I mean, just in general, I just like more. More is better. Sometimes. Not always. Sometimes. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the campaign called War Color Wars. Only the Arabs could fight over a parking lot. Toshiro thought he and his fellow advisors were standing near downtown Baghdad and Baghdad in a wealthy neighborhood. Beside him was Ghazi bin Faisal Square, or at least that's what a faded scratch out inscription seemed to read. Below the name was Abdul Karim Qasem Square, then painted over that Michael Aflak Square. The entire parking lot seemed to have been consumed by the rival factions of painters, each group determined to claim the small lot for themselves as the cars inside it grew more and more deteriorated. Tussle Hero sighed and tried not to think about the implications of the state of the parking lot. Gentlemen, we are here to represent the Cold Prosperity Sphere here in Iraq today, he said. Looking over at his colleagues, it is essential that these Arabs see us as his inspiration and his liberators. Just as the Asian people were shackled by Western powers and unnaturally divided, so too are the Arabs. Under the guidance of Japan, the people of Baghdad could become strong, free, and it broke off as one of his associates tilted the head pointed towards him. Toshio turned in time to see an angry man with a painted buck, paint bucket entering the parking lot. He was staring furiously at what the wall labeled Michael Aflac Square, the same wall that Toshihiro had parked his government issued car beside. By the time he realized the man's intention, he was already opening the tin. Toshiro. Toshiro let loose an angry yell as the blood red paint soared through the air. Well, this is a car can still drive, but, you know, still. Uh, where's the capital now? Also, on these Marines, we probably should throw in some anti tank if we haven't already. Yeah, we're going to need some anti tank on these bad boys. Anti tank. Oh, we got some. Oh, aerosol companies. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. And. Oh, they're going to put transports on them. Actually, aerosol attack helicopters. That should give us. Oh my gosh, it gives us so much more piercing. Who needs anti tank when you got literally air assault? You need a lot of equipment for that, but they're extremely effective. And then attack. Air companies, not as effective, but still pretty darn good. So, yeah, do that. Actually, yeah, we should make you guys a little bigger, too. Send in more Marines if you can. Uh, Marines. Um, go artillery as well. Go 22 combo with. Ooh. There you go. A little less speed, but it's fine. Whatever. You're basically air divisions now. It's fine. Whatever. Well. We won. Next war? I see 2.3 billion. Good job, guys. Good job. Uh, debt is 94.3%. Debt to GDP ratio, I should really say. Oman is killing itself now as well. Oh, crap. Um, actually, which one part of Oman do we like? Dofar? You can only send. Oh, we can send three. Okay, that's good. Here. Here there you go. That's fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. Alright, we're there. Great. Great, 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 great. Muscat, where did our divisions go? Madagascar? Seriously, where did the planes go? Planes? Hello? No, no. Where they go? Seriously, where the heck did they go? There they are. Ah! They're here. Oh, we can only send 20, god dang it. Well, that's the case. Basically, nothing that we can send. Insurrection Oman, not another one, but yes, another one. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, we won't do these other two. We should be fine with us doing whatever here, hopefully, but, you know, whatever. Go in if you can. Should be okay, right? As long as Americans don't show up. Oh, we have even more production units. Look at that. And there goes Egypt, too. God dang it. Um, something like that? I don't know. I don't really care. Oh, crap. How many guys can we send now? Three. Well, there you go. Got another group here, too. Three hundred now. That's pretty nice, actually. Uh, there you guys. Three hundred. So, one hundred. And just send a lot of casts if we can. We definitely have the numbers for it. 
Order collapses, very good. Do that, do that. Nice. You guys can deploy yet? Yes, you are. That's good. Do that there. And send 100 here, too. Arabia. Get out of there. It's good. And there you go. Halib? Oh, you can't go up there, huh? Can't go there, too, huh? There you go. Where are we at? I just want to set and forget it. These goes poorly, then so be it. Whatever. Don't really care too much. There you go. Go ahead. And there you go. Because I'm more focused on Oman right now here, too. Yeah, just do that. Go across if you can. Oh, the Americans are showing up. God dang it. Bro, that sucks. Oh, god dang it. There goes there goes the world. The world's dying. As it should be, but still. Hmm. I don't want to send them things that we don't need to send them yet. Send them, oh my god, that's so bad. Three more divisions. Send them the tanks. Hope they don't die over there. But if they do, I'll save us some money, maybe. Alright, so now we can send 100 here, right? That's good. Alright, so let's come back down here. Send a, get 100 going. Let's go with fighters. Where am I going? Fighters are up here. Gonna play very soon, and there we shall go. Alright? There we go. I don't care about that other stuff. Oh my god, deploy. Jesus Christ, deploy. IJN destroyer sunk off Yemen. News to, shot to and from the military outpost across the Indian Ocean. Until I finally struck Tokyo's transmitters a day, the buzzing receiver choked out reports of an incident in the Gulf of Aden. Military command gathered around the young communications officer handling the radio equipment, sitting and leaning on nearby furniture to brace for possible news of another confrontation with Germany or Washington. The crackling buzzing could barely be heard over the panic grumbles of president, officers, and admirals. In that sweaty command center, the young communications officer fiddled with knobs and levers, feeling the pressing, pressing gaze of his superiors from behind. Broken words and gritty radio signals have come to piece together the news. An IJN destroyer had been sunk off the coast of Yemen in a sad recent political instability and revolutionary upheaval. Some of the officers gripped their jaws, burned with doomy thoughts of confrontation, and others leapt from their slouch position to ease their sudden pierced tension. Clenched jaws and sweaty brows colored the room in a dread only intensified with reports of chaos and destruction now demanding Japanese involvement in the burning rage tearing apart the Middle East. It's an emergency, everybody. It's an emergency. Not even going to read them. Just give them whatever they want. But, except for other stuff like that. Increase commitment? Mm, seems okay. Well, we won here once, at least. That's nice. Um, over here, they're still trying to kill us off. What do you want here, too? That's good. That's good. Oil crisis erupts. Do we get a focus fee for that, hopefully? No? Okay. Well, whatever. How are we doing over here? Doing okay? Here, free them. A beautiful city courtesy of Japan. The view of Riyadh itself was beautiful. The countless hovels and homes which made up much of the view had all the same consistent style, the yellow beige sand that peppered everything which seemed so reminiscent of his own home, providing only further detail for the trained eye to identify. While the society was running late, there was little else to do after all. Glancing at his watch for the upteenth time, it was only then that the government representative waltzed through the door, seemingly entirely unaware of his own delay. As the Saudi met eyes with the Japanese representative, shining a smile which seemed as was wide as a gun itself, or gulf itself, Ino Taka Takahashi bowed met with the same gesture from the man who seemed as though he was having his first interaction with anyone from the role beyond Riyadh, or Riyadh at this very moment. Mr. Taka Takahashi, it's a pleasure to be in your presence. I take it your trip was a pleasant experience. The man was dripping with sweat, heavy set, and fitting the stereotype of the eager to please Middle Eastern lapdog to a T. The Saudi gestured to the pair of chairs that had sat next to the wonderful view. Taking their seats, Takahashi placed his briefcase on the table, opening it to a wide array of manila folders and paperwork. Riyadh is quite a beautiful and and is according to your economic growth prior to this period of instability, it had uh, <clears throat> plenty of reasons to be, certainly not hurt by the Empire's investments, said Tuchako Takahashi, the only one certain of which the Empire he had been speaking of. Yes, Mr. Takahashi. Now I'm sure you're aware of the threat which many of our neighbors pose to us now. Baatism stands to destroy us, internally and externally, as we've seen happen to a great many of those neighbors. Another bead of sweat appeared on the man's forehead, even as he sat nearly perfectly otherwise. Of course, Mr. Tahir, nothing you, you should worry about in the least. This does not look very good at all, now does it? If we could free those guys, that would be great. But if we could come over here, too, and just, like, zing-zong that way, that would be quite delightful. Campaign's not done yet, but it's getting close. Actually, if anything, I just want you to go here, so you can go there and just go there, side out. Go, I can picture the north if you possibly can first, that'd be good. And if anything, you guys go here, too. Just kick them kick out that way. Ooh, what's going on in here? German tanks? Ooh. 
You know what, just hold. Don't worry about attacking, just defend for now. They're winning and we're losing against them at the same time. That is unacceptable, man. We're doing okay here, though. Yeah, just you just go ahead and come here. It's fine. Oh my goodness. So stupid. Yeah, they're not taking nearly enough attrition for this to actually be working as intended. Not nearly enough. Um, just kind of hang out for now. Iraq. How are we doing? We're doing okay. Our tanks are not doing so great. Let's see. Oh, because they're not they're not great tanks. That's why. No, no. No battle tanks. No battle tanks. No battle tanks. Um, I don't care if this costs more. It's fine with me. APCs. Even just stack that armor up, man. That's what you want. Uh, attack helicopters. Good trans. Oh, we're out of army. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. Should be fine, right? Game, would you like to help support the attack here, sir? No? Alright. Oh my gosh. You guys went nuts down here. Eh, yeah, more armor speed is pretty good, though. Are you guys still attacking here? Oh. Odd, but okay. Suhar. Where are their victory points? Lib oh, that's not good. Liberia, eh? The Mano campaign, okay. Anything else? Just commitment. We could if we really wanted to. Let them starve and kill each other off. Good job, guys. Go straight for Badis. And Iraq is not looking good now, so you want to hold. And if anything, you probably actually want to come here. Stockholm Conference fails. Don't care right now. Are they going to literally destroy that division? We got close to it. Let them starve, let them starve. How are they not capitulated yet? Huh. Well, there goes those guys. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get involved down here. This no, There's no point for us to. Sudan. Just don't care. No one cares about the Sudan. Tell me one person who cares about Sudan right now. Tell me. Except for the people in Sudan. You guys are fine. You guys are starving and struggling for supplies. I feel like these guys are going to probably die down here. Um, and if we lose, whatever it is, what it is. Just six. Oh, rainy day fun. If you want to go listen, please go ahead. Darn it. Tahara Katsumi was not a fan of his oil crisis that had descended upon the world. Sucked in a rash work to ration fuel was the least of it, though the unanticipated cost of the bicycle did put a dent in his monthly income. The factory manager, part of the Toyota industry supply chain, was the worst ship than he'd ever seen before. Late deliveries, lacking in equipment, absent minded employees, and every report from company higher ups bringing worse news than the last. This month's report understandably put a smile on his face. While the crisis had harmed nearly every part of Japan's economy in some way, the time for <clears throat> turnaround had come. Due to what the report could only attribute to a variety of purchase orders from unknown groups across the Middle East, Toyota's vehicle orders had skyrocketed, and so did the factory's projected revenues. At last, the rape hope and sunshine managed to sneak into the grain clouds. Only after reading the report from the back, from front to back, did he realize they would make no mention of alleviating the issues faced by the factory. The only conclusion he could draw is that they would somehow need to meet the surging demand with the already limited means they were working with. The rain clouds decided to close ranks after a brief shuttle or shuffle. Katsumi was a resourceful man. The rain clouds are sunny day. This would need to be done. Immediately, two options presented themselves. It was an open secret that most workers could not cope with increased expenses multiplied by the crisis. Up until now, this was considered relevant to the running of the firm. But would most workers refuse longer hours if it means a chance to pay their bills? He reasoned that they would not. On the other hand, it maintained a long list of connections to tap into on such a rainy day. Normally, his lack of faith in the quality of outsourced tasks would prevent him from opening the door, but our times call for harder measures, and the final product would be shipped thousands of kilometers away after weighing the costs and benefits of each choice who decided that. Or would we be grateful for longer hours? Outsourcing this is a method of the future. Go down the list. Nah, they'll be grateful for longer hours. They will be. Oh, well. There goes that group. How are we not getting any supplies here? Bad supply. Hope we can hold out. Might not be able to because we probably no port, but still. But still. Can we at least win somewhere here? We don't have to win everywhere, but at least somewhere here would be very nice. Uh-oh. The Baghdad fall. Oh, Monrovia falls the PALF. That's cool. So, for some reason, we still have growth here with the oil crisis. Apparently, oil crisis is really not in TNO yet for Japan. Or at least this version of it, so. 
You know what? If you lose Baghdad, we lose. But honestly, I'd rather save those tanks. So, yeah. Squad, status quo prevails in Egypt. Well, that's nice. You should be able to beat those guys up. Um, here. See if you can hold out. That'd be good for those guys. Oh, what are you guys doing up here? Hanging out? Having a good old time? Having a good old time? We're waiting for Iran as well. Deficit. 7% uh, growth is not bad, but at the same time... No more deficit. Just no more, please. Yeah, those things are taking a beating. Bad supply. Less supply usage would be very nice. Naval radar integration. Come over here. Logistics, please. You guys actually might be able to win here, too. At least I won a couple areas. We don't have to win everywhere, but at least a few. Well, if they're attacking, we'll attack too, then. There you go. Not a bad idea. At least we get some more experience here. Nishi, what do you got? What do you got for us? Nothing? Alright, whatever. Didn't ask. How are we doing here? Double it? There you go. Have fun with that. We haven't lost Baghdad yet. Very weird, but okay. Republic of Sudan. Don't have good relations with them, but whatever. Don't really care. Happy 1978. One, everybody. Not a lot of growth, but cutting down that debt is pretty nice. Oh, they're coming back with even more guys. Look at that. Let us let them attack us. How are we doing on equipment? Doing okay? Attack helicopters could be better, but, you know, whatever. Alright, kill them all that way. Everyone's got involved in here. Oh, we're up on the Italians, huh? Nice. Actually, if we go straight to Erbil, Erbil, we should just be able to win, right? Happy February, everybody. There's like literally no tanks here left. Or really anything here. There's 6% strength, which is like basically they're dead already, but whatever. We're going to die anyways. We might as well use and abuse them, right? <laughs> we like to use and abuse them. We'll see. 6.6% growth, not bad. 93% debt to GDP ratio. Oh, we're not at war, so we can't do that one. That's just fine, whatever, but still. Suleimani. Still hanging out, having a good old time. Can we... Ooh, you're happy there, huh? Well, that's okay. So you getting guys that can help out. I love helicopters. Oh, we got... Oh, we need Mosul now. Oh, actually, you have enough supply there. That's actually really good. Nice. Yeah, actually, some might be able to do well here. Yeah, those Omani divisions not looking too good right now. Yeah, more army XP, great. All right, so with these tank arenas, twin combo with is where it's at for now. Transport helicopters would be very nice, but not really needed for though for the tanks. More fuel capacity, but we can wait on that. Maintenance companies might be best. Oh, air assault though. Oh God, air assault. Oh, don't play dirty with me. I gotta go with that one though. And get rid of this. IFE recons? No thanks. I don't like IFE recons. Mm -hmm. Engineers? Why not? We're in the middle of battle. We might as well do it, right? Alright. Right. Yeah, no. Good. Get in here too, maybe? No, yes, no, yes. Yes, no, no, yes, yes, no. Coffee, yes, please. A little bit of lag, but happy March, everybody. Happy March. Nice. Go into. Slowly winning there as well. And doing surprisingly well holding out here as well, so it is very nice. It's all because of us, actually. Oh! A little bit of lag, but Russia is reforming. That's where you want to go. Come on. There you go. Beautiful. Anything here? Uh, command power? Sure, why not? Why not? Yeah. Increase commitment. Eh. Oman. Go Iraq. Yeah, that would help them out. Screw it. Just give them all that stuff. 
Significant investment? Yes, we lost into Sudan because we didn't even try, but whatever. No, it's alright. Is, are we affected at all by it? The oil, oh, we have the oil crisis, which is... Oh my gosh, I didn't realize how bad it was for us. Honestly, with how bad it is? Pray for a miracle of military advisors? There's no discontent, is there? Careful approach. I mean, even with the tax temp hike, our growth is not hurt at all. Inflation is doing extraordinarily well. We're cutting down the debt. I mean, screw that. I love this type of, uh, you know, economy. You, you might just be able to win now. Just go win Oman. Now we can focus... Oh boy. Oh boy. Don't lose Baghdad or you'll lose the entire thing. Which, I mean, could be worse, but whatever. You got planes here? Oh, up to 80. Oh. Go down to 50 for now. Um, do we have Cass? Go down to 50. There you go. That should help out quite a bit. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, recon, sure. Hey, there we go, guys. Good job. Victorino, oh man, beautiful. Thank you very much for playing. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you very much for playing. Goodbye. Last cost. Goodbye. Very nice. Doing gr some ground damage. Yep, that definitely helped us out. Oh, but you're about to get in a circle here. That's not good. Get down here. Get down here. Oh my god, what the heck is going on with these guys? They are freaking the F out. Oh my gosh. You're literally at zero. You're gonna about to, we're about to lose a division here. We lost a division here. Well, god dang it. Well, we can still send another one now. Not bad. Actually, I'll send you. There you go. And even if we still lose, whatever, it is what it is. Hey, good job. Showing up for Baghdad. If you want to about raids on China, please go right ahead. Troubling. Oh. Well, there goes those guys. Come back into Baghdad. You're full strength, so you should do fine. Hey, now we're going to do well here. Well, maybe. Actually, if anything, I want you guys to combine, but you're still in combat, which sucks. Oh, and there goes Iran. Oh, crap. 5% 5 5 growth, not bad. Alright, so if that's the case, I want you guys to combine, you two. Go and combine. And we'll get some more divisions this way, too. Combine. God dang it. Get your butt out of here. Get back here, you ding dongs. Get back here! There you go. Now I can send another division, too. Makes it stronger this way. There we go. That's how we do it. Makes it nice and easy for us. At least we have two divisions that are relatively okay strength. So, so that's the important thing. As it, Germans are killing their own tank divisions off too. Beautiful. Yeah, helicopters are just so strong. I love it. You know, I love it. Should be able to win and get right there too. Oh, that's not good. But we're going to cut these guys off, so it shouldn't even matter, right? Right? Started the Iranian Civil War after the assassination of the Shah. Iran collapsed into <clears throat> a civil war. The late Shah's wife, Farah Pahlavi, has assumed the role of the regent and allied loyals to, to the old government in the north to prepare a defense against a coalition of revolutionary forces that has emerged through the country of German influence. While well, clearly united in a common goal, the coalition is an uneasy alliance between various desperate groups, and the prospect for unity long term remains slim. Military intelligence and foreign ministry have therefore recommended we focus our efforts to provide support and assistance for the Islamic Republic of Iran, suggesting it represents the best chance of getting strong ally in the region. The Republic's leader, Khomeini, Command I command strong popular support and anti imperialist rhetoric fits well with their own, with their initial diplomatic advance having proved positive with their popular support. And as our supplies and military assistance, we have a golden opportunity to gain a powerful ally in the region. Begin our preparations at once. Which one is this? Is it this you? Is it you? No. There's a lot of people here. Huh. Nice glasses, bro. Commit forces to Iran. The Islamic Republic of Iran, huh? Imperial State. Islam oh, here they are. How did I keep missing you? Yeah, this guy. Isn't he a real well real life guy? <sighs> yeah, duh. Um Iran. Send equipment. Yeah. Do that one too. 
air base. Ooh, air base would actually be really nice. You do that one. Get the air base going. Oh, I can't do that one. God dang it. You send volunteers too? Oh crap, no, I can only send two. Uh, here, I'll send both of you. Oh, you're not the same. That's fine, whatever. No one cares. Send Nishi. Nishi's really good, and I, I want to keep using him. Well, shouldn't have got rid of those planes, but whatever. Whatever. We only sent. Oh, 180. That's actually really nice. 180, huh? Actually. And. Bastard fat cast. There you go. And there we shall go, hopefully. Yes. Please. Thank you very much. You guys are doing okay here ish, maybe? Koko Tai, very good, very good. Do not abandon. Oh my god, please do not abandon the area here. One of you guys moving in, that's nice. You guys keep the guys placed for now. Because now we're going to go back this way. Good. And you guys help out there. And you go in there too. Going up to Mosul might be better, but they're going to come in here and we're going to do the best we can to kill these guys off as well. Push these guys out. Can you guys just all go around? How much? How many more planes can we send? The same amount. God dang it. It's not enough. Um, the goal is to just cut them off and kill them off this way, so. And how are we doing here? We're not doing anything here, which sucks. Okay, let's see. Ah. Yes. Iran, what are we doing here? Any other generals? Anima? Middle East kind of sucks. So much death and destruction, man. Uh, if you could kill that division off, that'd be great. I'm not sure if you actually would be able to, though. I'll go here first. We're just going to push out. Which is actually not a smart idea. Here, you all come this way. Karuk. Because we go there, and we're going to try to get Mosul back. You guys, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. They'll attack us eventually, too. You guys move up this way, actually. Nice. Good Mosul. Nice. Go there and go back. Don't get in a circle though. Yeah, no, you're not allowed to go there. Come on, come on, get in there before they. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. How are we doing in Iran now? Hanging out, having a good old time, that's fine with us. They're only militia, so you guys should be fine. Over here, we're doing okay-ish. No one's really moving in too much. Oh boy. Oh, they got they got back dead. Oh, we got Mosul. That will barely save us here. Oh boy. Oh, there goes those guys. Oh, Russia's not united yet. Huh. Go in. If you possibly can. You, we're not allowed to move from Mosul, which sucks, but whatever. Increase involvement. Um, you know what? Give them a uh, stability one up. One and one, not bad. How are the tanks not dying over there? He's fighting West Africa, so be it, so be it. Hold. Yeah, they should be suffering way more attrition than that. Way, 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 way more. Way more. It's risky. We could go here to here and kill that other division off, but still. Help them out. Good. Nice. Not bad. There you go. Take Tehran, they'll be dead. Which is good. Oh, we got back that back. Oh, where the planes go? Yeah, we definitely need these planes here, guys. Kinda sunk. If anything, I want to decrease you by like like 30. You guys go up to 50 now. Give them way more planes. There you go. That's that's not bad. All that matters we kill them off. We lose Baghdad, that sucks, but whatever. Nice, good stuff. Actually, you guys go right here. You know what? Where's the capital? That's all Basra. Dang it. It's all the way down there, though. Help them out. Keep pushing. They're just not doing anything over there, are they? Here, take all three. We're going to force the attack that way. Wait, they've not capitulated yet. Okay, whatever. Guadagan? 
Yes. Oh, can you actually win there, maybe? Yeah, you can. That's pretty nice. Pretty good. Pretty nice. God dang it, you lost Baghdad again. God dang it, guys. Force it. Oh! Nice. Good job, guys. No, 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 no. You're going to hold. You're going to go this way. You pieces of doo-doo. I wanted to kill that tank division off, you pieces of garbage. Hmm. Go main battle tanks. Slightly less recon, but we don't have IFEs. Oh, we still got them? We still got them, maybe? Oh, we're killing this division off really hard. Aren't we not? Oh, boy. Come on, come on, before they die. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, god dang it, are you kidding me? Ugh, that's so stupid. Sending more divisions over. Screw it. Uh, we can send one more. There we go. There you go. So stupid. Force it and kill them off. I don't care how many guys it takes. The more dead Jap... More, uh, Japanese. More dead German divisions, the better. Wow, actually, oh my gosh, they just won? Holy crap. Cable Street Avenged, huh? Alright, back to the planes. Planes, planes, planes. Um, we can send 80, so it was 30 and 50. Doing some good damage now. Thank God, we lost the planes, but whatever. Oh, where are we at? Deficit? Nope. Long. I want these guys in our faction. Let's go. Kill them off. Gas them. Gas them if you have to. Gas those German boys. And we're going to wait for Iran. So. Oh. Yeah, why not? There you go. Got some good stuff. Don't. Uh, you might want to go there, maybe. Maybe. Oh, peace conference. Hey! We won! It took way too long to do that. Way, 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 way too long. But we got these guys in our sphere. Now to Arab forces. We got Egypt in our sphere, which is kind of crazy. The last couple divisions. We got the entire thing down here, which is not bad. Revolutionary Iran and Liberation Front will fall soon enough. Not bad. It did cost us quite a bit, but, you know, it's okay. It's alright. Things happen. Light, stealth, aircraft technology. Yes, please, daddy. And better artillery. Yes, please, too. GDP, 90.4%. Very nice. Only 4.8% growth, but surplus of $4 billion, of course. Losing some helicopter divisions does not help us out at all, does it? Um, just convert you guys to what tanks? These are the tanks. Do we have any available tanks? Yeah, we're gaining a lot of stuff here. Four billion point two one. Let's see if that changes stuff up for us. Maybe four point eight percent growth. Not bad. It could be better, but whatever. All right, four point five. Okay, not bad. Same amount of growth. Not bad. Ah, and there they go. This is the last one we'll probably do. <sighs> Two divisions only, huh? That sucks, bro. But Nishi's the man with a plan. Further into the abyss, my friends. Further, further, further into the abyss. Uh, 140, not bad. Definitely send 140, so we'll go down by... Uh, there we go. And where are the other planes here? Thank you for playing. Goodbye. Gassing them and gunning them. Very nice. That about our budget? Yeah, I think it does have all the budget. Italy has nuclear weapons. Welcome to welcome aboard, Italy. Took you long enough to figure that out, huh? You're not sending them? There they are. If anything, let's send, let's finish these guys off first. Any upgrades? Oh, you might have some upgrades. Infantry later. Infantry attack. Well, we're not using infantry, so it's better to ambusher. That's the Faran. How are you losing here? Wait, what? Oh, they're in the mountains, of course. That kind of sucks. Herman. Uh, yeah, I get a bot. That's, no, no, help offers. Help off. That's fine. Just don't lose your. Oh my God, you're gonna lose the capital. If they lose, well, that's gonna suck for us, but still. How are we losing here? They're goddamn militia for the love of God. With engineers. You find them, you kill them off.
gassing them and gunning them. Gunning them. That's all we have now. Increase involvement to around. Uh, here. Some building more support, why not? You could use the money, can't you? Yeah, you know what's bad? When, even in mountains, these guys can't do anything here. Is this the tank division? This must be the tank division. It's hard to tell sometimes. Come on, stop lagging so hard. Oh, it's 22 combat width. Why is it 22 combat width? That makes no sense. Oh my god. Why are you 22 combat width, son? Wait, did they, they must have changed this to... Why is this 20? 6 and 4. That doesn't make any sense. Whatever, just do that then. Because you guys are 20 combat width with the Marines. Your Marines with that stuff. Come on, let's keep going, keep going. Yeah, they're literally just going to die there, which is fine with me. You know, I'm fine with that. They want to die there in the mountains. That's fine. 5.2%. Nice. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Oh, send their tanks in too. That's good. Kill them all off. Kill them literally all off. Americans are helping them out, but whatever. If we can get a picture of this group first, that'd be great. These guys are actually cut off, which is nice to see. Air Assault's going to help us out quite a bit more. Get some more elite force training. Yes, yes. Go here and kill these guys off. And go over here and kill those guys off. And then just kill, 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 kill. Ah, the story of 44. Ah, oh, what a great story. And budgets. Killing and budgets. What's not to love? Um, it is 71. Eh, maybe not get that one yet. Better tanks? Yeah, why not? Even better, Artie. Why are you losing here? Bro. I don't expect the tanks to do well, but the Marines have to do at least somewhat well. Right? Right? Signals because you can. Come on. Seriously. Force the attack and win. What are they doing here? 50% attrition is not enough to kill them off. What type of design is this, man? 50%. Oh, if we could take Kerman, that'd be so good. Kill them off. Kill them off. Go in and kill these stupid piece of garbage divisions off. Eh, not bad. 88.8%, not bad. Come on. My god, they're slow. Actually, I'm just going to convert you to the Marine Division. It just makes it faster and easier. Good. Alright, so that's the case. We're still going to try to finish these guys off. Right there. Any more planes we can send in, maybe? Oh yes, second night of the long knives. Um, they don't. Have, they do have some air superiority, I guess. We can go back up to fifty and send another thing of cast. Lots of cast, just so much cast. Nice, just almost over ten damage now. That's good. Good stuff, man. Keep them in place. Because your goal is right there. Because that's going to help other allies too. Would be a very. How do we get Afghanistan in this sphere? I know we can somehow, some way. That's weird that they're in the OFN too. Oh, look, they died. As they should. As they flippin' should. Were we war these guys too? No, they're just kind of. That's a glitch nation that doesn't really move too much, which does kind of suck, but whatever. Um, I'd rather fight the Americans head on. Let's come up back up here. Not bad. Not bad at all. Surplus still. Great. October 22nd. Increase. Encourage religious fervor. Ah, uh, sure, why not? Unite the Imams. How much stability and war support do they have? Oh, they're, they're maxed out. It's good to always check. Fortress Calm. Well, we don't own it, so. Send equipment. Probably a good idea. Since we lost that division, 4.23 is not bad. Not bad at all. Let's find them Americanos. Gotta blow them up. A couple Americanos here and there. A lot of militias. Sorry it's taking forever, but it is what it is, you know. T you know, border wars in TNL. You need both loose, son. They're militia, for God's sakes. And APCs. Not bad. Not bad at all. Find them and kill off their supplies. Like, kill off... They, I think they're out of guns. They got enough manpower. Yeah, they definitely do. They just ha don't have enough equipment, like guns. 
M16s looks like maybe. But I ain't got enough. Americans can try as they like, but they ain't gonna win here. Mm -mm. You're gonna die with them. Can you get down here too? Get down to there to get down to here, maybe to the port. Cut these guys off, especially the American divisions, would be real nice. Real nice. Go here as well. Hi, Boz. Either one of these two, cut them off, cut them off, kill them off. That would be great. Capital right now is Shiraz. 4.2%, not enough. Whatever. Fun finding mask. Man, Italy just must be sucking hard right now. Hey, you're gonna suck them up there, which hopefully the enemies will be able to take care of. Hold for now. American divisions. You're gonna hold. You're gonna force defense. I'm not gonna let you die like that there. No, sir. No, sirree. Either win or die. That's your goal. 220, nice. Let's increase this a little more. And there you go. Even more damage if possible. You can force you attack now, too. <laughs> Stupid Americans. I wonder if we can send more divisions, too. Oh, a little bit of lag. What's going on there? What's going on? Keep killing them. Keep killing them. Just go on in. Don't worry about it. Oh, these guys are getting pushed back quite a bit up there. Ah, I love helping them out. Ah, we'll give them some stuff. Increase involvement. Ah, we're pretty okay about that right now. All right, so let's not be too crazy here and actually attack where we need to attack. Very good. If anything, I just want to kill off those American divisions. That's all I care about right now. Take out the supply base. That'd be great. Good job. We have more things we can build here. Wow. There you go. Every place gets an admin building. So we get that much more political power. 4.3% growth, 88% debt GDP ratio. Well, would you look at that? They're done. They're done. Even if that means we're going to end ourselves in the process. Kill off all those divisions, and then all the left are the American divisions, which cannot get any more organization. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, let's finish these guys off first. That's fine. Just go ahead whenever you're ready. Really been cleaning these guys up. 220, which we have more, but whatever. Can all y'all do well? Yes, you can. Nice job, boys. Nice job cleaning them up. Iran is our battlefield. <sighs> Not quite 2042, but that's alright. You know the Imams? Nah, we good. Political favors? Uh, give me some political favors. How are we doing with the uh, whole stuff here? Happy 1972, everybody. Uh, I was hoping we'd get to this point in the campaign, but too bad there's no focus tree. 140 ain't enough. There you go. Spend all that PP because he can. Beautiful. Hey! Would you look at that? Good job, guys. Tabrez? Yes, please. Last one. 4.5% growth. Just go all the way down, son. All the way down. Just delete the Navy. Actually, I was going to show you the score at the end, but like, here's the score 29, 20, 23, 43. Oh, that sucks. Uh, how do we do here? Battle for Italy, we did okay. We did great, actually. We should, we should get a higher score than that for 100. We should get more score than that. Italy's a flipping massive nation. I mean, it's not as big as, you know, some of the other nations we have here in the game, but, like, we should get a bigger score from getting the flipping Italians and their entire sphere into our sphere. That's an accomplishment. That's a huge accomplishment for the sphere. Giving them only 100 score for us does not make sense, in my opinion. But then again, who am I? I'm just a guy on the internet who plays way too much TNO. Now, oil crisis ongoing, which I guess we're winning. Uh, 75, 50. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing. They, so they have total victory in South Africa, stalemate in Hawaiian missile crisis, battlefield Italy. They lost oil crisis. But how do they? I mean, I guess they have more military, of course. We did. I did delete a couple ships here and there, but triumph or victory in the Iranian civil war. Khomeini's forces have triumphed in the Iranian civil war. After the collapse of the anti-government coalition in Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran remains last standing faction. Thanks for support for his regime, this will be a significant boon for economy or an influence in the area. Nice. I'm not sure why these guys are over there like that, but yeah. This makes no sense. No sense. No sense. And these guys suck. Minus 300. Victory is 35. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. They, the Germans really lost. They had a moon landing. That's all they could do. They got a guy on the moon. That's it. 
I mean, yeah, the Americans should get the total victory for Africa, but this makes no sense sometimes. But I think that's going to be it for us, everybody. How is Italy only worth 100? Africa. They think Africa is worth way more. Or South Africa. And they don't even have this, these guys anymore. But they would think South Africa is worth way more than flipping Italy with, what, Croatia, Bulgaria, Serbia? Oh, my goodness. They are sorely, sorely, sorely mistaken. Oh, my goodness. But that's the world, my friends. Took us an hour and a half, but hey, not bad. If you enjoyed the campaign, leave a fat like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.